Hey friends, Justin here. Welcome back to my channel. Thought I'd post something kind of fun and different. I just went to two different thrift stores. One is called Thrift Giant, and then the other is Goodwill. So I got a bunch of stuff from Thrift Giant, and then a few, some books, and a couple of knickknacks from Goodwill that I'll show you. So grab something to drink, some coffee, some tea, depending on what time of day it is, maybe a beer or some wine, and just enjoy as I unpack and show you some of the things that I bought. I'll show you this first since it's out. I needed some, I've got kind of a small bathroom, but the uh, flooring is, is this gray kind of vinyl. But I needed some over the toilet storage for quite a while. I know this is not traditionally for the bathroom, but it was just a couple of dollars and I'm gonna see if it works as a solution for me. You know, put some towels here and bathroom stuff there. I just don't have a lot of surface space in my bathroom and um, there's a lot of open spacing over the toilet that I can use. So I'm excited to see what that looks like in the space and if it doesn't work in my bathroom, I've got an entryway where I can use that and, you know, perhaps hang coats and things like that. So I think I'll get some use out of it. Tell me what you guys think of that shelf. You guys know me and bags. If you've ever watched any of my thrift hauls before. But I got another laptop bag. I'm refining and I'm getting smaller and, and uh, more compact as, as time goes on. And I'm realizing what I actually need. What I kind of like about this is it's kind of a convertible. These little side pockets basically disappear and it turns into more of a you know, kind of a folio that you can hold. And so I kind of like that. It's got decent space. The laptop that I work with now is really small. So I'm excited to see if it if it's a good fit. And then when you do need the handles again, you know, you just pull that up. And I just thought that was fun. I picked it up, put it back, picked it up again, you know, because I told myself, I said, you do not need this. But it was just so fun with the handles that went up and down and kind of a, you know, perfect little unit that I said, you know what, go ahead and get it because you'll get some, some use out of it. My bedroom decor, moving on to the next thing, my bedroom decor is kind of Burberry, Paddington Bear, do you know what I mean? Um, maybe kind of a London vibe. And so I needed a blanket to go on the end of the bed to match um, some of the other stuff that I'm going to show you. So I got this kind of, I don't know what you call it, checkered blanket to go at the end of my bed. And then some of my throw pillows, and I got this at the, the same thrift store last week, if you can see, have a little bit of that light brown stitching. They're Deep blue with light brown stitching. Now it's not a perfect, you know, match, but it'll be fine at the end of my bed. Last week also, I got these little furry, when I say Paddington Bear, these little furry, I don't know, lumbar support pillows to go along with the, the pattern. And so, I don't know, I'm going to throw the, throw all of this stuff in there together and kind of see if it, if it gives me a good, ambiance. Comment below if you if you see my vision. I got a shirt, a uh, polo shirt while I was in there. I really like this. It's a good breathable material, um, but I think this would be nice either with jeans or some nice chinos. Um, I think it was just a couple of dollars, yeah, two dollars, but I don't know, maybe it's because I'm old, but I says, this is a nice polo. So I looked at it for a moment or two and I, I ended up taking it. It'll be nice, I can put a brown watch with it and wear it into the office on kind of a nicer day. Because it's got that breathable material. What do you guys think? Isn't that pretty?
That pattern is for two dollars. I bought okay, now into some more fun stuff. I bought, and you guys have to tell me what this is. It says it was handcrafted. Handcrafted in Brazil. It's got a, a kind of a Swedish or a Canadian vibe to it, but it says it was handcrafted in Brazil in 1976. And it does have like a little stamp on it that says uh, made in Brazil. But I just thought this was so pretty. And so I don't know what you put in it. You guys tell me. You know, I, I assume it's not a tea. You know, it's not for tea, but isn't that beautiful? And so, you know, I'll find some other little decor to go along with it. But that was just so pretty to me. I couldn't, I couldn't leave it behind. Isn't that fun? So that's for the house. But this I got for work. It was $2, this little silver bullet looking thing. And it's all functional. I've, you know, I've played with it and made sure everything, you know, works appropriately. Checked out the compartments. And so I grabbed this for $2 for in the office days. When I'm sitting there, we've got kind of like a clean desk policy. And so you can use that top as a little, little cup for yourself. It's nondescript. And so while... You know, something like this is super decorative and, and jazzy and cozy for the home. I think this will just be perfect, you know, to walk into, walk into the office with. You see it? Really compact, you know. Boro stuff here. I got some shorts. I don't know why. Bought some shorts. Bought another little notebook. You know, to kind of that would fit inside of here. Comes ready made with a pad and paper and, you know, a couple of compartments where you can put some things. I don't know what that is. But it's got the uh, kind of that magnetic clasp. And so I thought that would be good. It was a dollar, you know. So, and then once I picked this up, I said, let me get out of this kooky little bag section before I buy all of this useless stuff. You know, I've got 50 bags for the same thing. Okay, this thing I'm going to, well, I'm not, I'll try it on over there. I bought for the fall. I've been looking for you know, kind of in line or in style with that kind of Burberry Paddington bear style. I've been looking for like a trench coat and um, I didn't find one this week, but I found this interesting looking safari jacket. I can understand why someone else might have returned it thinking, you know, that that uh, might have been a little bit passe for them. But I, I, I really liked it. I really liked how it fell on me. And I really need to stand up to really show you. But, um, you know, if I'm wearing a blazer or something or a jacket, I can throw this over it and kind of maintain kind of a, a put together or a polished look, but um, not have, you know, such a bulky outfit on. And so it's it's a safari jacket. And on the inside, I obviously can't stand up and show you guys really, really well. But let me see. Can we get a sense of the outside of the jacket? Well, what I really want to show you guys is the inside. There's kind of a map on the inside. Let me see what it is. If it's a, yeah, it's a map of Africa. And so on the inside of the jacket, you know, the different zones of Africa. And I just thought it was so fun. A safari jacket. I've never owned anything like this. I can't imagine, you know, where it would be more useful. But, 
you know, in the fall, I just thought it was kind of a nice, simple overcoat that I can wear into the office when it's, you know, and it's a really nippy day, but I still want to maintain a measure of professionalism. Um, perhaps I'll figure out a way with the video to turn it right side up, you know, one day and, and kind of give you the effect because it's a really nice look, I'm telling you. Take my word for it. Now, this one I'm going to try on under with my undershirt. I bought this just kind of like a casual warm up. It's a Ralph Lauren small size, thank goodness, but like a, a, a zip up. And I liked, you know, I liked the way that it fell on me with it open, you know, like this. And so, you know, it's really casual, really, really snug and cozy. Like I, I immediately got comfortable when I put it on. And then it looks, not, you know, no matter how much you, you zip it up or don't, it looks nice. It gives you that nice, nice fall aesthetic. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but it's it's really understated. It's really nice, and it'll be really nice to bum around the neighborhood, you know, when it starts getting nippy and something like this. And it was $10. The reason I think it was is I'm going to have to uh, sew the pockets back in. There's a hole, I think, in both sides of the pockets. Now, what it does have are these upper pockets that are usable. So you can put your phone and stuff there to, you know, get started. But I am going to have to sew inside of the pocket, but it's not visible at all. And so, you know, I can just, you know, I, I'm, I, I feel cozy, you know. So what do you think of this? Isn't that funny? Really, really cozy looking. And I think that's it for the Thrift Giant. And then I left there and I ran across to Goodwill. I had like $20 left in my, my budget. Uh, Thrift Giant ended up not being, I think it was about $40 or something. And I says, okay, you know, maybe I can spend $60 or, or there around today. I didn't find anything at Goodwill, guys. What I did do is buy this gorgeous salmon pink tie. Isn't it beautiful? Just beautiful. And it's a Neiman Marcus branded tie. I think it was $2, but, you know, you, you a crisp white shirt or off-white shirt. And I think this is just the bee's knees, you know, in a, a high power meeting or something. And um, so just loved that. And so I'll get some use out of this beautiful salmon colored tie. And I don't know if you guys can get a good sense of the pink, but just loved it. I bought some books, some bite sized books, and then one larger one, you know, I'm, I'm into finance and investing, and they had one that was called Bullseye Investing for a buck. Targeting real returns in a smoke and mirrors market. If anybody's into finance, then you'll know how relevant those statements are. This book has more wisdom per page than any reader has the right to ask for. I hope so. And so I'll, I'm going to check that out. Then they had another section that had these little bite-sized books, and I just am in love and will probably go back and buy each, uh, all of them. So the first one I got is Webster's Computer Dictionary. The role that I'm in is kind of a data management and programming role, and so knowing some of these terms, computer architecture, uh, databases, and digital data processor, it, it really has all of the, the in the in and out terms that, you know, you would need as a data management uh, 
professional. And so, so that's so it's cute and it's bite size. It's something I could carry with me potentially in a in a bag. You know, keep going back to our my little bag, but it wouldn't be cumbersome. You know, in a little carry around and and useful to have. You know, there are often interchangeable terms for the same things in industries, and you know, it'd be nice to have a little reference so that you're not. Uh, you don't look silly. And then these are the fun ones. These are kind of location-based novels that I'm going to have some fun reading this fall. One is called Octagon House, a Cape Cod mystery. And the author, Phoebe Atwood Taylor, she was born 1909, died 1976, lived most of her life in, in Boston and Cape Cod. And so it's a mystery book. And I just love location-based, you know, stories. This other one is called Bahamarama. All right, so in the tropics, the days are long and the nights are filled with murder. And I, I love the ambiance. I love being in a, you know, an immersive setting and, and uh, following a good mystery. It's It's... If you're a reader or, you know, do audiobooks, doing a location-based novel is 60% of traveling to another place. Your mind, you really feel like you've been transported somewhere. Uh, but anyway, you know, had a, a great time. Let me see. Did I show you my last thing? Okay. The last time I was there, I was in this kind of Burberry, Paddington Bear decor mine, and I saw this little... Uh, Paddington Bear sitting there and I left him there I think it has to have been uh, two weeks ago um, he was sitting there again today and I said I just I'm not going to leave him behind you know and so I'll put him on the bed when I'm away in between the, the pillows just to kind of tie the theme together might be a little bit on the nose, and if it is a little bit too on the nose, then I'll, you know, find another home for him. But I felt so sorry for my friend. He's been sitting there with his little frown, you know, for a couple weeks, and I couldn't leave him behind. So I got a little toy, and I can't even tell you how much this was now. It could have been 10 bucks they might have charged me for it. But I couldn't leave him, couldn't leave him. What did you think? What were your favorite items? Um, what do you think I'll get some good use out of? I'm going to have some, some good fun with the books. The shelf, I'm going to go in in a few minutes and install and hook up. We'll see. I may put a plant, you know, a little plant on top. Perhaps a couple of books may be cute. We'll really see. I've got a lot of bathroom stuff that needs sorting, and so we'll see how much room I end up having. But I took off today, so I've got kind of a three-day weekend, and I'm just vibing and having a good time and shopping and just taking it minute by minute. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and until our next video, thank you so much for watching. Cheers.